Hey, functional bodybuilders, thanks for joining me today. We're diving into a 20 minute follow along landmine workout, one of my favorite attachments and tools in the gym. Now, if you wanna jump right into the workout, use the timestamps below to get started now. The landmine is so versatile. It takes the most common implement in most gyms, the barbell and plates, and adds an entirely new dimension to that training tool. There are so many exercises that you can do with the landmine to hit every part of your body. Now, if you don't have an actual landmine attachment, don't stress. You can take your barbell and you can literally shove it in the corner of the gym. You can shove it between two heavy dumbbells or up against another piece of equipment in your gym. And it's gonna work just the same. And if you're worried about damaging the equipment or you're worried about damaging your wall, then all you need to do is grab a 50 cent tennis ball, cut an X in it, slide it on the end of your barbell, and now you have a safe way to shove that into the corner of the room without damaging your paint or the equipment that you have. Now it's time to go work out. Let's get into it. Your landmine workout today is gonna be full body. And if you're ready to jump into it, like I said, you can use the timestamps to go right for it. But one thing that if you have the time, it's great to do a warm up. And here you have two options. I'll show you in a minute the actual movements that we're gonna be doing in this workout. And you can always use those movements themselves at light weight with an empty bar to warm yourself up. Alternatively, you could do a body weight warm up, which is what I'm gonna show you now. So the first movement, again, because we gotta get the whole body ready for training, is we're gonna be doing a push up to alternating pike toe touch. What that looks like is I come down, press up, alternate. So we're gonna do 10 of these. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. If you need to, you can push up on your knees and then press back. And once you get 10, we're gonna go ahead and stand on up and we're gonna move in the next movement. And that's gonna be, what we call a cobra tall kneeling to standing. So hands behind your head, stand all the way up and back down. Up and back down. Alternating legs each time, we're gonna go for another 10. So that's three, four. If this is bothering your knees, get yourself a pad. Do it on a soft surface, maybe at your house. Go two more. Great. All right. Next up, we're gonna work on the shoulders for some stability, lateral stability with your trunk. We're gonna do a side plank rotation. So in a side plank, reach your arm up to the sky and then reach through. One, two, we'll get 10 of these as well. And what we're focusing on is rotating with the shoulder that's on the supporting arm. That's where all the rotation and stability is coming from. That's 10. If you take three simple movements like this, all body weight, that cover a good range of motion, cover the lower body and the upper body, add in some core stability like this, and do them for 10 reps, two times through. So we'll do two sets of each of these. You'll feel infinitely more ready for training, and you're gonna get more out of the training session than if you were to have skipped it altogether. All right, let's do it again, push up, Alternating toe touch for 10, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Right to your knees, hands behind your head. Tall, kneeling to standing. Five per leg or 10 total. Just make sure you're switching sides. Try and keep your hips pointed forward as you're stepping down 
and back up. This one requires a good amount of strength in your hip flexors and flexibility. Go for one more. Awesome. Now drop down onto your side, side plank, rotations. Try and reach a little bit further through this round. As your upper back, your thoracic spine is starting to open up. Get a little bit more rotation. Two more. Last one. Switch the other side. I can't stress it enough, but even if you're gonna do a short workout, 20 minutes, add three to five minutes in for a warm up. It's gonna make all 20 minutes that much more effective. Rather than spending your first five minutes of your workout just getting the blood flowing and feeling like you're awake, now we feel awake and ready to go. So next I'm gonna move into showing you what these exercises of the day are actually gonna look like and entail. I wanna have you see them through my movement, maybe practice them yourselves. So get your barbell, put it in your landmine, stick it in the corner of the room, and then I'm gonna walk through the four movements. We're gonna do this EMOM style. So every minute on the minute, we're gonna start a new exercise. And on the first movement, we're gonna be doing something called a B stance squat. That means we're gonna offset our stance slightly. We got most of the weight on the front leg, using the back leg to lean us in. And we're gonna come down, try and break parallel with this thigh and back up. Holding this in what's called the goblet position, right by the chest. Okay, so we'll do six on one leg, six on another leg. We're gonna keep it pretty simple. We're gonna keep six as the repetitions for everything today. Next up, we're gonna go from squat to a pull. So this one's called a perpendicular row or a meadow row. You're gonna drive your forearm into the thigh. You're gonna split your stance and we're gonna pull our elbow up to the ceiling. Elbow up to the ceiling. It comes out to the side, not back behind us. We'll do six there, drop the weight down, come to the other side. Boom. Okay, next up, we went squat, then we did pull. Now we're gonna do hinge. This one's called a B stance RDL. We're gonna stand perpendicular to the landmine. We're gonna offset most of the weight on the front leg and it's down and up. It's kind of like a single leg deadlift. We're getting that stretch back here before we stand up. And then we'll switch sides. Same thing. Stretch and back up. Great. And then for the last one, we're coming down to the floor. We're going to do a Z press. We're going to hold goblet style again, but we're going to start on our right side. We're going to press up, down to our left. Press up, down to our right. So it's an alternating shoulder to shoulder Z press. And this one is gonna be six per side or 12 total. Okay. And I'll talk about one more thing that we're gonna implement in this workout and that is control. So on every rep, think about lowering under control. Maybe it's two seconds down to the floor and then up fast again. We call that tempo. So the tempo is two down, up fast, no pauses. This is gonna get us done every set in about 30 seconds. Now for choosing your weight today, I'm gonna to go ahead and try this with 35 pounds to start with. Again, we're gonna be going every minute on the minute. We're gonna do these four movements for four rounds. That's 16 total minutes. We got a four minute core finisher to come. That makes a 20 minute workout. When I get started, if you find that you chose a weight that's too heavy, 
go ahead and lighten it up. Have some options around you. If it feels too light, you wanna go a little heavier, you can slide more on. I'll caution you against adding more weight until you get to the second or even third round of this because you're gonna to start to develop some cardiorespiratory fatigue as well as we, as we move along and you don't wanna find yourself feeling like, whoa, I added too much weight. So let me grab my stopwatch, grab the clicker for the clock and we'll get going here in just a moment. Okay, you got your timer, set your 10 second countdown and here we go. We got 10 seconds. We're getting started with that B-stance squat. Get that five and six. Switch stance. One, two, three. Five, six. So that took me about 30 seconds to do that first set. That means I get 30 seconds of rest. Definitely feeling that a lot in the quads. And you can probably use that back leg to lean into it a little bit. And you'll feel a good stretch in the ankle of that back foot too, which is great. We're getting a little bit of mobility in that back leg. Coming up on minute number two, we're going into that perpendicular row or meadow row. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Switch sides quickly. One, two, three, four, Something important on the meadow row, now that we got 30 seconds to rest, really drive that arm into this lead leg because it's gonna keep you really stable. It's gonna keep your back nice and flat, okay? We don't wanna be rolling forward or trying to balance too much. So use that for stability. Okay, coming up on that B stance RDL. Here we go. it up. One, two, three, four, five, six. That one took a little bit longer. I think I was moving a little bit slower on my cadence, but what I was really trying to feel was putting most of that weight on the front leg when we're doing that RDL. That forward leg is what's getting all the work there. All right, here we go with these Z presses. You can straddle the weight like this, or when you lift it up, you can bring your legs together. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Okay, round one is done. If you need to make a weight adjustment, if you need to lower your weight, you can right now. Note, some of these exercises are gonna feel harder than others at this particular weight. If you found the squat to feel too easy, add a rep or two. If you found the press to be too hard, that was the hardest exercise for me was the press. Maybe you need to drop a, weight down, uh, drop a repetition down. But I try and encourage you to stick with it for at least another round before you make any big changes. Here we go. Round two. Two. 
two. The other thing you can do is if you're feeling like it's a particular exercise is a little too easy, as I've scripted it, slow your cadence down. Three seconds down instead of two seconds down. It's gonna add more time under tension to the muscles. You're gonna perceive yourself working harder even with the same weight. All right, meadow row, here we go. Three, two, one. Switch sides. Two. Three. Four. Something else to remind you of here on the meadow row is on the way down, we want to let our shoulder roll forward and get a good stretch. You should feel a stretch all through the back, upper back, when you get down to the bottom. And then when you pull back, you're retracting that. So stretch, retraction means more activation of that muscle. Okay, here we go. B stance, RDL, ready, and go. on okay coming up on that Z press next Whew. that is just one of my favorite RDL variations that there is I feel it so specifically on that forward hamstring and glute okay up we go one two three Halfway through, halfway through. Again, this is the time to make a quick selection, adding a little bit of weight. Maybe it's a five pound plate, or maybe you take off five pounds, something that makes you feel confident. You're gonna finish this workout. We're halfway through. Make sure your reps are high quality. You're not getting sloppy with your form. You should be able to control it through that full range of motion. Three, two, one, and B stance squats. Probably notice that I keep adjusting my feet on the first rep or two. Take this extra second, find the place that feels most comfortable and like you can really get deep into your squat. It's gonna look different for each person, depending on your mobility and your experience with squatting and your unique body. We all have our own unique way of finding optimal movement. Don't let anybody tell you that there's only one way to do it. Okay. Landmine row, meadow row. Remember to get that good stretch at the bottom. Support yourself in that off arm. Drive it into your thigh. Here we go. it up. Okay. 
three, four, five, six. Whew. Whew. Home stretch. We're 10 minutes in to a 16 minute EMOM. Try and stay focused on high quality movement. If you're feeling like you're working so hard that all you're thinking about is when are these reps gonna be over, you're working a little too hard. Back off the weight a little bit so that you can really focus on quality. Here we go. One thing you could think about is if the upper body movements and the lower body movements, you want to do them at a different weight, you could have a 10 pound weight that you slide on and off depending on the exercise. All right, here we go, jumping into a Z press. Every rep as you bias one shoulder over the other. So I come over to my left side, I press up on that side. I feel my left side core having to engage ever so slightly more. One of the great benefits of doing sort of biased or unilateral work, is it's gonna make your trunk have to stabilize in unique ways. So remember that is like just a, a tip for when you're training, a subtle variation you can make instead of just doing everything on two legs, straight forward, you can always bias one side ever so slightly. All right, let's do this. Last round. If you're finding that gripping is a problem because this is such a thick diameter at the end of the barbell, you know, one great tool to grab is lifting straps. You can have lifting straps and you can just roll around the barbell, give you that extra little bit of grip so that you don't feel like you're limited by your hand and you can be whew, really working on your back. Side. Remember to get that stretch. All right, two more movements, two more minutes. Set up for that B stance. You want this leg pretty much at right on the outside of the barbell. So the barbell points almost directly into your ankle. That's the best place to set up for it. I'm gonna control my movement a lot on these last couple rounds here. Slower on the way down, building more time under tension on that hamstring and that glute. Ooh. Other side. 
Same idea on this side, slow down. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, last movement. After this exercise, I'm gonna give you a one minute break and then we're gonna go into our finisher for the core. So here we go. Last set, Z press, set, go. Keep it slow on the way down. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12. Great work, everybody. You got 30 seconds to ride this out before the 16 minute clock is over. We're gonna take a minute break. And at that point, what you're gonna need to do, if you wanna start preparing yourself right now, is we're gonna take this plate off and we're doing the rest at body weight excuse me, at empty barbell weight. So empty barbell, we're gonna do two exercises to finish out. I'm just gonna show them to you while you're resting for the next minute. But the first one is gonna be a Russian twist. So goblet position. Your heels are slightly off the ground or they can be on the ground and you're twisting from side to side. And then, next up is gonna be the Turkish sit-up. So, sit up, straight on, holding the barbell, overhead. Okay, so the format, since we're gonna get going here in about 15 seconds, and if you need an extra minute to pause, go for it. We're going 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off. So try and hang with me. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. Twenty. Okay. Next up is Turkish sit-ups. Do them all on your right side for this first interval. Here we go. Ten more seconds. Three. Good, rest. So we're going 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off. This is a traditional Tabata interval. And now we're gonna go back to the twist. Go, one. I'm gonna show you the variation where I keep my heels on the ground. All right, back to the Turkish sit-up. This time, let's go left arm. Ready, set, go.
Okay, turkey shit up again, right side and go. Ooh, time. Now I have to admit that Turkish sit-up's getting pretty hard. The further you move back towards away from the landmine attachment, the easier that's gonna be. Okay, last interval of twists. Here we go. Three, two, one. Okay. Like I said, if you need to make that Turkish sit up easier, we're on the left side now for our final 20 second interval. Just move further away. time. Way to go team. That was awesome. I got my breathing up, core definitely firing, full body workout in 20 minutes. Hang around. We got a cool down coming your way. If you're going to jump to the end and call it a day, then thank you. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe for future content just like this. Let me know if you like this follow along workout format and I can bring you more drop a comment below. All right, so that's a wrap on the workout. And now I'm just sort of checking in with my body and I'm feeling a lot in the hip flexors and the quads, both from the squats, but particularly from those Turkish sit-ups and those Russian twists that really fires up this midsection. And so we're gonna do a long lunge, hands up on the, on the thigh. We're gonna hold for a minute on this left side. We're gonna do a minute on each side. And then the second position that we're gonna get into is gonna focus on the upper body. I feel my delts, my chest a bit from those Z, Z presses, those shoulder to shoulder Z presses. Definitely got this upper, upper body working. So we'll pick a movement, a static position for that area of the body. And that'll kind of just conclude the cool down. So remember, warm up and cool down that we did today really not super time consuming. It's gonna add three to five minutes to either end of your workout. It's a perfect time to sort of mentally check into the workout and mentally check out from the workout. Remember those 20 minutes that you're dedicating are your hard effort moments of the day. So make sure you're ready for them. And then when you're done, make sure that you cool down so you can head out to the rest of your day and feel energized and not feel like you're carrying some of that like intensity baggage from your workout. And look at that, that's been a minute. So switch to the other side. Whew. Try and extend that step out so that you're really dropping this back thigh down towards the ground. It's gonna make you feel like you're opening up this whole chain of muscles that got tight from, again, doing those B stance squats, the Z presses, the Russian twists, the Turkish sit-ups, all that really fires up that area. A note about timing of workouts. If you only have 30 minutes to, or excuse me, if you only have 20 minutes to work out on a given day, then only figure for a 12 minute hard workout. The other eight minutes are gonna be warm up, are gonna be preparation, cool down. You never wanna say like, oh, I've got 60 minutes, so I'm gonna be working out hard for 60 minutes. It's like, no, you have 60 minutes, you're gonna be working out hard for 40 minutes, and you're gonna spend 10 minutes at the beginning making sure that you can actually work out hard that way for the day. All right, that's another minute there. And then this one, come down and we're gonna stretch our left arm out. We're gonna roll over. This is gonna help me open up my pec, my shoulder on that left side. We're gonna hold for about a minute here. So again, back to the 60 minute example. You got 10 minutes at the front end of your training session to get some active range of motion, get the heart rate up, get the blood pumping, warm the body up. Then you got 40 minutes of hard work 
focus, focus, focus. And don't take it right up until you have to leave the gym. Just do 40 minutes and leave yourself 10 minutes to do the simple cool down. And with the simple cool down, letting your heart rate come down, letting your nervous system kind of chill out, get into that parasympathetic rest and digest state. You're ready to go tackle your day. You're ready to go get some good food in your system, recover and feel great. As opposed to finishing your last five seconds in the gym with a super hard burpee or a super hard Metcon or super hard weightlifting set. You walk out the door, you're feeling a little wobbly. You're not feeling you're, like you're all ready for the day. It just doesn't set your mind up right for what's to come. So take those extra, extra few minutes on either end of your hard training session and budget that time in to your workout so that you're not missing it. So many, so many times people say, oh, I didn't have time for this or I didn't have time for that. We well, didn't budget the time for it because it wasn't part of your expectation heading into the gym. So make it part of your expectation and get it done. And there we go. A minute on each side, lower body, upper body. Thanks again for joining me today. I hope you had fun. I sure did. We'll see you next time.